Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be continuing on with the Open SSH series. As a predecessor to talking about teleport, I want to talk about Bastion hosts. So I want to put it in context on how to install them with Open SSH. Stay tuned right after this. We t I touched on this uh, briefly in the last video about Bastion hosts and that they were a best practice. So because it's a best practice, it's something that we definitely want to talk about. What is it anyway? What is a Bastion host? So it's just, it's just a regular Linux host that can be made accessible from the internet as an option. Hopefully you use a VPN or some other mechanism to tunnel into it without having it open directly. But it accepts SSH connections, but it does not accept SSH sessions. I mean, you can make it do that, but as, as a best practice, generally you don't. <laughs> you don't open it for allowing people to log in to your Bastion host. What a Bastion host does is it provides the connection pathway to the destination server without actually having direct contact with that destination server. This gives you a chance to reduce the footprint that you have in your security exposure to the single host, and it allows you to harden that host without having additional processes or other workloads that are running on it. So yeah, uh, sometimes you'll hear that, that, that term as when it passes the connection through is jumping. Yeah, a Bastion server because of that is often called a jump host. But it is not a jump server. That's something completely different. So, I mean, altogether different. Where terms are randomly shuffled around just to embarrass newcomers. But that happens all the time. There's a lot of reuse and overuse and misuse of terms in IT. Uh, perpetrated a lot of times by people that are marketing products that are trying to compete with others. So they will uh, indicate that their product is a me too even though it may lack features that actually make it. In our case today, we're attempting to uh, bridge one or more firewalls, allow a connection from the outside to come in and be able to access a server on the inside of the network. However, you know, you can use Bastion servers on the inside of your network as well. There's no problem with that. A jump can automatically be configured so that you don't have to connect to the Bastion host and then in turn, once you get a shell prompt, well, in turn, then connect to your destination server, which is the whole reason why we want to talk about that. What do we do to set up a Bastion host to get started? Well, we want to set up a minimal, as minimal of a server as we possibly can using whatever distro you prefer to use. We don't want a lot of extra services on it. We don't want a lot of extra software on it. We certainly don't want things like uh, programming languages on that host at all. And we also want to move our open SSH server to a port other than 22. And yeah, don't use 22, 22, 22. Even my mother knows about that one. So yeah, pick something other than something that ends in 22. We want to have a process in place to apply software updates and security patches on that box. Hopefully it's automated and it's done without having to have some intervention to be able to check it each day. You'll probably also want some kind of scanning software that checks to see if there's been any intrusions or any disturbance to the file system. On Debian, we want to leave the password field blank so that we disable the root password. Now that is going to cause you a problem. If for some reason that you drop into single user mode, you will not be able to log into the, the uh, box. We don't want to, the best practices for a, a Bastion host is we don't want to reuse that particular server for anything other than an SSH service. We also want, don't want to allow a SSH user to log into the Bastion host and get a, a shell prompt. Basically, we don't want them to do anything other than jump to their destination host. Also, we'll want to clean out any other daemons Cup servers, Apache servers, Nginx servers, Samba, any of that kind of stuff we don't want up and running on the box. Yeah, so I'm going to be showing OpenSSH today 
Uh, but I think this lays the groundwork for what Teleport will be doing, so that's why I wanted to cover this and actually show it to you. I have some assumptions, however, that we'll be doing, and these are things that I have discovered as, as I have been using one. I will be using my domain name servers and, as a result, be using fully qualified domain names to do this. The reason is, is that um, Bastion hosts can be a bit finicky about uh, FQDNs, or more specifically, the lack of use of FQDNs. I have used short names in the past for the host names, like, you know, like just Bastion uh, instead of Bastion.MacKnife.info. But the problem is sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. And so in other words, it won't connect all the way through. So, but whereas the fully qualified domain name does work all the time. As far as network connectivity is concerned, your client should be able to see or access the Bastion server on the network. The Bastion server should also be able to access other SSH servers on your network. And for some strange reason, whenever we're referring to Bastion hosts, you'll see in the literature they're always talking about them being in front of your SSH servers. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to have to do here is we're going to need to go into our Bastion host, which as you can see I am signed into right now. And what we want to do at this point is make sure that we're all set up. Now, I have gone through my hardening steps already. So let me just show you. I have a firewall running. And so let's take a look at that first. So you'll notice that the only port, I'm, now I have 22 open for this right now because this is pretty much default after I have installed the software, uh, the Debian installation that is, and I have done my hardening steps. And that's as far pretty much at, that I have gotten. So the next thing that I want to be able to do here is yes, I'll, I'll want to change my port. Now I'm not going to do that for this server today because I just want to keep things simple. But yeah, you'll want to do that for sure when you bring it into a production host. So uh, now I could, you'll notice that my source is allowing connections coming from anywhere and going to anywhere. Now I could go in here and I could, I could decrease my security footprint even further by specifying you know, a line where this host is allowed to connect to that host and on down the line. One of the things that I'm going to do today though is I'm going to show you the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have your keys and your key exchanges set up correctly for the Bastion host and the Destin and obviously we want it from whatever client machine we're going to be using. Now the client machine today for me is going to be Blue Ice. So uh, when I connect I already have my key set up so that I can get in and log into the machine. So this one allows, this particular user allows access to the system. Now again, I could go in and I could limit um, this particular sign-on to only be allowed from a certain administrative user to set of terminals or, or, or client machines or whatever. I could do that. So let's, let's go look at... Um, our SSHD config file because there's some things in here that we'll want to do. So down so all of this is default, you know, this is the garbage that's left over from that. Make sure that you don't have anything turned on in here. Use Pam, that's fine. Uh, but you know, we will be turning that off. Anyway, now that one, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn that off because we don't, I will control that down below. Yeah, message of the day is fine. I don't really have a problem with that. This is pointing to my, if I want to use FTP services, I need to point, leave it pointed to the subsystem on my server to find the SFTP server. So I will leave that alone. But this is, where the security protocol is beginning to kick in. So 
I want to have password authentication turned off so that I don't allow people to actually log into the box. I don't want root login <clears throat> to be able to connect either. I am Now, if I wanted to change my port, it would be done here. Uh, protocol 2, I always put that in just because Linus will flag it as an error if I don't, even though OpenSSH defaults to Protocol 2. We talked about that before. Permit empty passwords. Well, we're not going to allow passwords, so we don't really care. I'm not going to be using GSS API authentication. I do have a banner that's displayed, so I have that in here. A log level verbose. I can turn that back, but for right now, I want to know what's going on. If I have a problem, I want to know about it. Max auth tries two, max sessions two. Now, you probably will need to uh, you'll need to modify the number of sessions you allow in in uh, um, to be connected through the server. For me today, I'm just limiting it to two. Yours, based on whatever you're doing, you'll want to change that. Agent forwarding, no, we're not going to do that. Keep alive, no. Compression, no. Client counter count max is two. Again, you'll want to adjust that according to the number of people you have. Uh, one other thing that um, I will tell you is do not dis disable TCP forwarding. If you do that, <laughs> you, if you do that, this won't work because the Bastion server relies on that in order to forward this session to the client, to the server machine from the client. So some other things that I'm doing here, these are, um, these are, I'm doing a match on user pi. So I could put in, you know, Joe, Fred, you can add however many users you want. You can also have match group if you have groups that of users, like you might have an admin group where you can do this, but I'm just showing you an example. This is for this particular user only. We're not allowing X11 forwarding. Permit TTY, so we're not going to allow them to have a terminal session on Bastion at all. Uh, and we do not allow a, any tunnels or gateway ports to be established. And finally, just to make sure that that user can't log in, we're, in, we're enforcing a command to go to user SBIN, no login. Now, is that going to have much of an effect on SFTP? No, probably not. But we can test SFTP and make sure it is not working. If it is working, we'll definitely want to disable that too. So, um, but that's what you need for here. And then you'll need to, you know, do your restart your SSHD server. Now, I would suggest because you're shutting down all these things. Keep a session in, <laughs> up on the box unless you're on a VM or something where you have access to the console and can get into the box if you do brick yourself out of the SSH server. So, I mean, I've done it before. I, I just leave this open as a, you know, as, as a, uh, a, just to make sure everything's going to work here fine. Just making sure that, yeah, this did come from that system. So, all right. So I want to cat that file. And we'll append the file authorized keys. Okay. Okay, so at this point, I should be good to go. I'm on my client machine, so let's see if I can get into, <clears throat> so you would do this with a J, and you would say <clears throat> Bastion, and then I would do, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go here? Okay. So we've made our connection through, but how do we know that worked? How do we know it just didn't go straight in? Well, we can, let's turn on verbose and see if this will give us enough information to actually see what's going on here. Uh, so you'll notice that it, it received a public key from Bastion host. So we know it connected to Bastion host. 
And then it will try a number of mechanisms to forward that connection. And you'll see some of them are failing. And finally, we get one sent down here. We get this, we get this stuff working. And we're passing the options over to it. And we're making our connection. And the keys are matching up. And we're able to log in. There's the privacy message coming from HyperDeck. And then finally... There's our shell, our shell prompt. So we were successful in being able to use this as a Bastion host. So what we would need to do at this point is for the clients, we'll need to bring the keys over to the Bastion host for each client so that I can log in. I mean, I have to act like I'm logging in even though it's just going to forward the connection. But, how do, but the other thing is, uh, I guess I got ahead of myself just a little bit there. So let's let's go ahead and get off of it again. So how do I how do I prevent having to use this every time? Every time I'm connecting to the host, I want to get rid of that. So there is a oops, <laughs> there is in your dot ssh directory. There's a file called config, and config allows you to pass parameters that you want to repeat for each each one of the things. So in this case, anytime it connects to hyperdeckmacknife.info, we're gonna insert. Now you can wildcard that. I could put star.macknife.info. So any any host in my network, I can have this apply. So I wanna do a proxy jump to the bastion macknife.info, which is the same as doing the J command. So, all right, so let's try it now. Let's try it without this. And we'll leave the V on so that, again, we want to see if we actually did traverse through the Bastion host. So we have our login prompt because this server can access HyperDeck directly. Uh, there's my command. And it's applying options for this because it found a config line in there that matched. So we know that our configuration line is picked up. And it's telling it to do the proxy jump. And so it is setting up to do that. And there's my connection to my Bastion host right there. Then in turn, it forwards the connection onto HyperDeck and we're connected and done. So now I don't have to worry about that. The, the other advantage to that, of course, is if I have other SSH servers that are not set up to go through the Bastion server, then those will still work using the same command type. So I don't have to worry about, okay, does this one need the minus J parameter or not because it's in the config file. But the more things you change on the client, the more times you have to replicate it from one client machine to another. So I have said in the last video that you shouldn't be using SSH keys, you should be using SSH certificates. So yes, um, that's, where we're going to be using teleport to help us because doing certificates gets a little cumbersome when you're using a bastion host and so what we're going to do is we're going to use teleport as our bastion host and it will manage all those things for us so that's the next that's the next thing that we're going to be looking at so the next time now I, here I, I cannot log into the bastion host it just it will just fail it'll say nope sorry can't get in um, so let me just make sure you see that so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a source port for well we can actually I think we can actually say And that will be the, this. so this is saying only allow this input, only allow this connection from Blue Ice um, because that's the IP address for Blue Ice. And we can, we can, validate that. It is one, it is 130. I'll restart the firewall and then we'll take a look at it. Uh, sorry. 
I am really doing my, my best to do the stumbling today. All right, so you'll notice that there is my, there's my port being open only for that. So let's just go test it. Let's see if we can actually get in. Okay, very good. Let's try something first. Yeah, firewall is definitely blocking it. So let's try nmap minus p22. Uh, I'll try this. We'll try to get the version and we'll do it on Bastion. Yeah, it's so yeah, it is definitely now. I, let's see. I could try a, a little bit stronger scan and it does see it but it says it's filtered so so yeah it is going to indicate to a potential adversary that it is filtered unfortunately it does see the port being up but hey <laughs> they don't know where it's filtered from so that's that's at least one good thing uh and yeah and it will block it, it is blocking the reverse so I would have to set up a reverse rule if I wanted Hyperdeck to use the Bastion to go backwards into another server, which I could do that too. That's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, I do plan on doing one on Teleport. It won't be next week. It, Teleport is a very complicated product, and I would like to spend enough time with it uh, in order to understand all the nuances so that I can present it to you properly. But I promise I will do that just as soon as I can. But in the meantime, you can play around with the Bastion server and, and the firewall rules and see how those work. Um, I suppose maybe the next video I should do is something on firewall rules for you. Uh, I'm still using IP tables, but I should be moving over to NF tables. I do have uh, some transitions underway to do that. I, you know, I just, it just takes me time in order to accept something new. That's just the way I am. Hope to see y'all again real soon and bye for now.